I don't want to spend too much time introducing people, so feel free to just say who you are and okay, what you're doing. Okay, fine. Um, so, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Fabien Chouteau, software engineer at uh, AdaCore. So, AdaCore is the company that uh, maintains and develops the uh, open source compiler for uh, Ada, which is called GNAT, it's based on, on GCC. We develop a lot of other tools uh, for uh, software development as well. Uh, and today I want to talk about uh, how to use um, uh, ADA in embedded programming, in particular with uh, small microcontrollers like you can find on this kind of, um, of small boards. Um, so before <coughs> I start my presentation, there will be a, a live demo. I will try. So please, everybody, if you can pray the God of live demo. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so to begin with, I will give you my, like my view on the ADA philosophy or the ADA way of, of doing things, um, which is, uh, in my opinion, that programming is all about communication. You have uh, an application, an ID, a program in your head, and you want to communicate it. You want to communicate with your tools, like the compiler, because that's what is going to make your uh, executable at the end. You want to communicate with other tools like static analysis, uh, IDEs, stuff like that. You want to communicate with users of your API. If you're writing a library, you want people to know how to use the, the, the library. With your colleagues, of course, because they will read your code, debug it, etc. And you even want to talk with, communicate with that idiot that wrote this really stupid piece of code. But, oh wait, it was me two months ago. Shit. So um, that's something, uh, and Jean-Pierre talked about it, but uh, uh, one of the main design goals of, of, um, of ADA is really based on the, on the fact that uh, we read code and we debug it more than we program, actually. And it's probably not something that we want to hear a lot because we, we'd like to see ourselves as you know, programmers, developers. We create stuff, but actually the reality is that we spend a lot of time reading code. Um, so, to put that into the context of embedded programming, uh, what is different for embedded programming? It's, it's a bit difficult to explain. Uh, there's a lot of things that are similar. Uh, usually you will have the obvious, which is you have a different tool chain, you have a different uh, uh, processor, etc. Um, but really what it comes down to, in my opinion, is that uh, every bug costs you a lot more a lot more time to investigate because you have different tools. You don't have, uh, for instance, as much breakpoints as you want in your debugger. More time to try a fix because you have to reprogram your embedded target. You maybe have some hardware to reconfigure. Um, if you make a mistake, if there's a bug, you can potentially destroy your hardware. And that's an example that I will take later. Or even, I don't mention it here, but you can also uh, um, injure people or kill people. In, in the example of uh, aircraft or trains, stuff like that. Um, and updates are uh, usually also very difficult to propagate. If you, are, if you have a product on, on, a, on a board like this one, it's very difficult to propagate an update once you have a, a bug in it. Um, and the other point that I will cover is the, the need of control. So um, I guess my, my presentation is a good, uh, good uh, follow-up to what uh, Jean-Pierre said because I will also show the high-level representation in ADA and how you can control the hardware uh, representation. So um, that's one point. And the real-time constraint, so I will also quick, uh, quickly talk about uh, tasking and real-time in, uh, in ADA. Um, so let's get started. Uh, to talk about embedded programming in ADA, I will uh, take the example of a, a, a servo motor. So it's a little motor like this, you can set an angle. It's controlled via a uh, electric signal with some pulses. Um, if you put a one millisecond pulses, it will go uh, 90 degrees to the left. 1.5 millisecond is the natural position and 2.5 is uh, 90 degrees to the right. Now, <coughs> what happens if you don't respect this constraint? Well, here you are in the real world, and there are real consequences to your uh, bugs, which means you will destroy your servo motor. And of course, that's, that, that's not something you want. It costs money. Uh, you will lose a lot of time. So 
you want to avoid that. Um, so let's see how ADA will help you to communicate the constraint of your system to avoid this kind of situation. So if we take an example from any other language, your interfaces to control the, the servo motor will probably look something like this. So you, a, a procedure in ADA is a function that doesn't uh, return anything. Uh, you say, okay, let the user set the angle, the desired angle of the, of the, um, of the servo motor. Now, if you are a really, really good programmer, you will do something like this. You add comments, right? So, uh, as you can see, you have some very, very important information over here, because otherwise you will have uh, uh, a failure and you will break your hardware. Um, so, that's what you would do in most programming languages. And uh, as you can see, this is not very practical. So first, the compiler and the other tools don't know about this constraint, right? Because it's only in the comments. And then if somebody um, decides to change the implementation and say, okay, I don't want to go from uh, 90 degrees to minus 90, I want to do a percentage. I want to go from zero to 100. Well, maybe the uh, developer will forget to update the comment and the users of the API will, don't be, uh, will not be notified by this. So in ADA, you really uh, express what you want <coughs> and you will define your own type. Um, and this is, again, uh, in, the, in the perspective of what you were just saying, that there's, there's a lot of uh, languages that claim strong typing, but really strong typing is not that useful if you cannot uh, create your own type. And ADA gives you all the power to create your own types. Um, so now, in practice, what does it mean? Once you've said that, well, as we said, uh, there are um, the compilers, the tools, the users of the API. Everybody knows about this. Um, in practice, what does it mean? Well, let's have a look with, um, with the compiler. So in a, in a use case really simple like this, the compiler will be able to tell you, okay, this is really dumb. You're just uh, giving a wrong value. So it will uh, uh, give you a warning. So that's f first mistake avoided. Great. Then if we go to a more uh, difficult example, here we multiply the angle by two, so it's more difficult to analyze. Uh, in that case, you will need to go to a static analyzer like uh, CodePeer. And again, the tool, because it has more information, will be able to give you um, more um, uh, precise and more uh, useful uh, analysis. So again, the the, here, the static analysis tool will, will tell you there is a high uh, probability of an error here. The next tool is formal proof with Spark. So there will be a presentation this afternoon about, about Spark. Um, what, what this gives you is uh, a mathematical proof that there is no error in your program. So in that case, there, there is an error, so the, the tools will, will tell you. <coughs> um, so at this point, you should catch most of your error, but sometimes you don't have access to these tools, so maybe some <coughs> bugs will go through. Um, so the next step is to uh, actually um, run your application, and you will do that during the development. Usually you, you run under a debugger. Uh, and as uh, Jean-Pierre uh, already explained, when there is uh, such an error detected in an ADA program, there will be an exception that is raised. Um, and once when you are running inside the debugger, uh, the exception will be uh, uh, caught. And so you stop before the error and you protect your hardware. And then you can fix. Uh, so you again, you catch the bug very early. So the next step is to actually catch the, the, the error inside the code itself. So you, the error is just an exception. Uh, a standard ADA exception, so you can catch it uh, like this, and you again stop before uh, doing something bad. So you protect your hardware and you save money, you save time, etc., etc. The last chance is uh, this procedure. When an exception is not handled uh, in ADA, yeah, this procedure will be called. It's a very good name, the last chance handler, and that's your last chance to do something about the situation. Uh, usually. When you, when, you, when you go to this, you're in a really, really bad situation, so you probably want to shut down everything, reset the board, or maybe wait for user input, something like that. 
Um, and so that's your last uh, resort. After that, there is no more protection. Um, so um, those checks that you, uh, uh, the constraint that you put on the type, and the checks that come with them, they have uh, some performance impact, of course, because there will be more code added uh, to your uh, binary. There will be some comparison and stuff like that. Um, it's very useful when you are in development in the beginning because you want to catch the bug as early as possible and you, catch, you want to catch all of them. But once you are in production, maybe you want all the performances and you can remove everything. And in that case, it's up to you uh, if you really want to dare uh, running your application without any checks. <coughs> um, so another example of, uh, of how you can express uh, what you mean in, uh, in ADA is uh, contracts. Um, so there is also a presentation about contracts later on. Uh, so just a quick example, I like this example because it's very simple and this actually saved me uh, a couple of times. So we have a driver for the servo, right? Um, and um, um, uh, usually there are some hardware to initialize before you can actually control the, the, the servo motor. So this is exactly what we describe here. We say to the user of our API <coughs> that yeah, so it's a precondition of the of the procedure set angle, so something that must be true before you call uh, the uh, procedure. And we say that the, the servo must be initialized. When the condition is not true, uh, well, it's the same story. You have, uh, so the, the tools will be able to, to, to tell you this, for this information. And then the debugger will, uh, will, will be able to catch the exception. You can catch it in the code as well, and the last chance handler, et cetera. Um, another a quick example that I really like about uh, ADA because uh, many people can relate to this if you use uh, C or C++ for instance. You will often see uh, assert in C or C++ code for <coughs> functions that take uh, pointers as parameter. Say, okay, uh, to check that a pointer is actually not null. In ADA, that's one of the examples of how you can express that uh, you take a pointer, okay, but it should not be null, and that's part of actually your your uh, your interface and your API. <coughs> so now let's talk a little bit about uh, hardware mapping. Uh, so that's one of the, the the things we need when we do embedded uh, development. We need uh, uh, usually a good control of the uh, hardware representation of our type. And uh, so as Jean-Pierre said, <coughs> in ADA you always have the high level view of your type and then you can control its representation. So for instance here I say that uh, my type servo angle should be represented in, uh, in a byte and I want uh, 16 alignments. If I use a small, smaller value here or two small values, the compiler will tell me, okay, it's not possible. Uh, same thing if I, somebody tries to uh, increase the range and it doesn't fit in the in the in the size anymore. There will be a compiler error. Um, so this is useful when uh, uh, addressing hardware. It's also very useful in uh, uh, network communication to form packets. <coughs> um, the next uh, really common. Uh, uh, practice in, in embedded uh, uh, programming, usually with uh, small microcontroller, microcontroller, sorry, like like you have in, in this kind of boards. Uh, it's the memory mapped uh, register. So I don't know if you uh, are familiar with this with this notion. I will try to describe it uh, really quickly. So this is a representation of your address space. So that's all the memory, all the addresses that your that your CPU can uh, can uh, can read and write. Um, of course, on small embedded uh, uh, processors like that, you don't have the full memory, or you never have the full memory uh, uh, used. So you, you will have some areas where you have the flash, so it's the read-only memory that holds your, your, your program. You have some areas where you have uh, the RAM. Other areas will be allocated to peripherals. Um, what this means is that um, um, when the compilers, when the CPU, sorry, 
reads or writes data from those addresses, it will be exactly like uh, talking to uh, the peripheral. So when you read uh, uh, a data from this address, you receive data from the peripheral. When you write, you send data to the peripheral. <coughs> um, and so this is the kind of uh, description that you will find in your hardware documentation. Uh, so this is a virtual example. It's not actually uh, uh, representing something real, but it's, it's really uh, exactly like you would find in the documentation. So here we have uh, uh, what, what is called the memory mapped register. Uh, so it's eight, uh, eight bits, uh, and we can see that there are some fields inside those eight bits that are defined. So the first four bits are reserved. They, they are not used. The fourth and fifth are uh, used for the sense field and the six and seven are not used as well. Um, and the documentation will, give, uh, will tell us what are the possible values and the meaning of those values for, for the sense field. Um, in C, usually you will have uh, drivers written with something like that. Uh, so you will make uh, more or less uh, macros and um, um, bit, uh, bit shifts and masks like you see here. <coughs> So uh, as you can see, and, and you, you, you can probably guess that this is not really safe to do. Uh, for instance, if you want to put the value 1, which is a wrong value for this, for this field, uh, you will don't know about it. The compiler will not know. Also, this is not very uh, practical to write. Like You, you, have, you need a special, uh, a special instruction to clear the field first and then set its value, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> um, so now in ADA, um, again, what we will do is have the high-level view and the low-level representation of the type. So first, we declare an enumeration type. So that's the, the pin sense uh, field that we saw before. We declare its uh, high-level view, which is there's three values, uh, disabled, high, and low. We specify the hardware representation, so the size will be two, and the, uh, also the hardware representation of the different uh, values. Next, we go to the register itself. Again, same thing. We have the high-level view and the low-level view. So we have the first reserved uh, uh, field of the, of the register. We then define our sense uh, field and the uh, second uh, result. And uh, as Jean-Pierre showed as well in his presentation, here you, you define the hardware representation. And so you define the exact position of each field. And as you can see, this is really exactly what is, what is in the documentation. <coughs> um, to use this type, well, you uh, declare an, uh, uh, an I.O. register. Um, and with this construct here, you say with address, you tell the compiler that uh, this variable should not be allocated on the stack or should not be allocated on the heap. You specify yourself. I know that there is an I/O register at this address, and that's how you you specify it in Ada. And then it's just uh, you just assign the value of an enumeration, uh, uh, and so you have all the checks that we mentioned before. <coughs> so um, this kind of representation can be a little bit difficult to write, a bit a little bit tedious. So fortunately. Um, the uh, ARM, uh, you know, ARM, the, the, the uh, creator of the, the Cortex M microcontroller, they um, developed a format called SVD, which is a uh, hardware description format. So uh, as you can see here, it's, it's a description of the different registers, gives you the address, gives you the different values, etc., etc. And uh, we developed, so my colleague Jerome developed a, uh, a tool that will take this format and produce uh, the, the ADA representation uh, that we saw here. This will be generated from the description. So this is really a great, a great way, a great tool to start programming uh, ARM microcontroller in ADA because uh, most of the hardware representation will be uh, automatically uh, generated. <coughs> um, Another example of uh, um, ADA features that are really uh, useful in the, in the embedded uh, area, um, it's the tasking embedded inside the language. So uh, Jean-Pierre, you already uh, talked a little bit about this. Uh, 
I have a blog post uh, right here. If you want more info on this, I will, I will just describe quickly a few stuff, but there's more info over there. So in EDA, uh, tasks or threads are a really native uh, feature of the language. Uh, and for uh, the embedded uh, uh, markets or the embedded uh, projects, there is actually a, uh, um, a specific tasking <coughs> profile, which is a restriction of all the big, the big tasking features of Ada, uh, and it's called uh, Ravenscar. And this is really meant for real-time operating system and to give you real-time properties uh, with Ada. Some of the features that are available, you have uh, a clock that will give you the, the system tick. You can do delays, so put a task in, suspend a task for a given uh, amount of time. <coughs> you have protected objects, which are really something uh, quite unique, I think. Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to explain quickly, but it's a mix of, uh, of uh, mutexes and semaphore, and you can also do interrupt handling with this. Uh, you will see in the blog post, uh, I have an example of how you, you can really create an elegant um, uh, interrupt handler and uh, a driver, for instance, for a serial port using uh, the protected object. So gives you multiple things, but mutual exclusion. You can do synchronization between tasks. So for instance, if you have a, a task that produces data, a task that consumes data, you can have the task, the, the, the consumer wait in a suspended state for the, the, the producer to actually give it uh, data. And all of this is really part of the language. Uh, it's really safe to use because there's a lot of control over what you can do or what you, what you cannot. Um, the last point is, as I said, the interrupt on link. So uh, there's also, uh, uh, as part of the EDA language, uh, the, the, the construct to, to handle interrupt, which is very, very useful. <coughs> for um, embedded and uh, microcontrollers. Um, so this is just a quick example of a task in ADA. Um, so you can see task is a, is, a, is a keyword of the language. So here we declare the, the body of the, of the task. And it's just basically a loop. We do a delay, so we suspend the task uh, every time, and we add uh, 100 milliseconds. So this will be at 10 hertz. It's a typical code that you would use to, uh, to make a uh, periodic task uh, in Ada. Um, so now I will talk about um, the Ada Drivers Library project. Um, this project we started in uh, 2015, I think. Um, and uh, so I'll show you a few points. So it's a firmware library, so it's a library that will give you tools uh, to support and to implement uh, programs on microcontrollers like this one. Uh, it's uh, hardware and vendor independent. So uh, this is both a bad thing because it means we have to write stuff ourselves. It's not provided by the vendors. But on the other hand, we can work on really uh, focus on really having the most um, uh, clean interfaces and, and uh, reusable code. It's 100% uh, written in Ada and uh, hosted on, on GitHub. You can uh, you can have a look. Um, so why we started this library? Well, um, the first thing is that Ada has a, has a, a good properties to uh, bind with other languages like C, for instance. But this usually uh, does not apply very well to um, drivers provided by the vendors by the hardware vendors because they use, as I said, as I showed before, they use a lot of macros and, and bit shift and stuff like that. It doesn't really apply very well to, to, uh, to do a binding in Ada. And uh, the next point was also a way for us to actually use uh, our tools and to show, to have demos uh, for people to show what, what you can do with Ada. And the last point, of course, it's, it's really fun to do. So that's, that's a good way. Um, <coughs> So quickly, some, some uh, um, architecture aspect of the, of the library. Um, in the library, we have what we call components. So what we define by components is a separate piece of hardware that is connected to your microcontroller using uh, a standard um, uh, protocol, like I2C, SPI, UART, etc. <coughs> Um, this is a special, so the, dri the drivers are for a, a piece that is external, and most importantly, it's, it's working using standard protocol. So the idea is that here you can change microcontroller. You can go from 
uh, Cortex to an AVR or to whatever brand you want, you, the driver will still be the same. So for the components, we want to have a very uh, reusable code and portable code. Um, this is the quickly the list of what we support right now. So we have some audio DAC, some camera, uh, some what we call motion is a gyroscope, uh, accelerometers, etc., etc. Uh, touch panels and, and stuff like that. Um, the next uh, layer that I want to talk about is the middleware. Uh, so we don't have a lot here, but uh, I think we have some interesting things. Bitmap drawings, so to use on, on the LCD screens. Uh, if you know if you know the Adafruit uh, GFX library, it's pretty similar. Very simple drawing um, um, uh, features. Um, we also have some file system support, so we support the, the FAT uh, format, and also some kind of virtual uh, file system over the ARM uh, semi-hosting feature, and uh, a small log utility to filter the logs, debugs, etc. Um, so this is more or less what it looks like. So you've probably seen this kind of, uh, of diagrams a uh, ton uh, of time. Uh, what's important to see here is that uh, this part, the SVD binding, is generated by a tool. This part over here, uh, the hardware abstraction layer, the components, the middleware, are all portable. So really, if you want to uh, benefit from the uh, ADA drivers library, and if you want to start programming your microcontroller in ADA, you will have to focus only on these uh, low-level driver parts if you are using a, a microcontroller that we don't already support, of course. Um, <coughs> speaking of supports, uh, this is the two platforms that we support so far. So with ARM, we have the, uh, the uh, um, Cortex-M uh, architecture, which is ARM uh, version for uh, microcontrollers. And uh, since last year, we also started to support the first uh, RISC-V uh, microcontroller. Um, <coughs> so I have here the list of boards that we support. I will just uh, spend a few seconds on, on them. Uh, this is uh, a really good option to start. It's uh, one of the boards that we support the most. Uh, so in STM32F405, um, this one is really cheap, like 15 euros or something like that. But you have everything you need. There's a, a debugger integrated, uh, a really powerful microcontrollers, and, and as I said, that's one of the, the boards that we support the best. You then have this one, which is more or less the same, but with an LCD screen and, uh, and um, touchscreen as well, which is nice. And then you have uh, all the uh, discovery family, which uh, adds uh, new features. This one has an SD card and an audio output. This one is in the Cortex M7 family, so it's the new generation of, uh, of Cortex M microcontrollers, more powerful. There's an Ethernet uh, uh, port on here as well. And again, another uh, ARM Cortex M7. Uh, <coughs> um, this is the OpenMV. It's the board that I have right here. Uh, it's an open source, open hardware camera. It's more or less like the Arduino of, uh, of uh, computer vision. So it's a small microcontroller with just a camera on it. Uh, we, we support that as well. Um, this is the CrazyFly 2.0. It's a really, really small, uh, like it's the size of my hand. Um, quadrotor, um, and again, there's a small microcontroller on it. I will I will show it a bit later as well. Uh, this is the BBC Microbit, um, really cheap as well, like 15 or 13 euros. Uh, there's a, a Cortex M0 um, processor on it with a Bluetooth uh, low energy support. Um, so so far, we have uh, somewhat limited support for this, but in the future, we. We will probably focus on uh, using this particular board as the reference platform to learn uh, uh, embedded programming in ADA. And as I mentioned earlier, we started to support the first uh, RISC-V microcontroller. So this is the hi 5 one board from uh, SciFi, the company SciFi. <coughs> so what's next for the ADA drivers library? Um, so first, we want to focus on the, the configuration and build system. Um, so I will show you quickly so f uh, what we have so far, but it's a little bit complicated. We use a, a huge hierarchy of projects, uh, which is not very practical for beginners. 
More documentation, of course, there's not never all, uh, enough documentation. Um, we also have a plan to bring uh, really basic uh, support, out-of-the-box support for every possible uh, Cortex-M devices on the market. So uh, that's, that's kind of nice. Um, Linux GPIO, so I mentioned uh, microcontrollers so far, but actually the components driver can also be used in, uh, in a, on a Raspberry Pi, for instance, because you have uh, I squared C protocol supported, UART, etc. So uh, we want to have uh, uh, some kind of binding for uh, being able to reuse the components driver in a uh, IDEA driver's library, be able to use them on the Raspberry Pi. Um, the AVR platform, so this is maybe not the most uh, uh, trendy platform at the moment, but I think it would be really cool to have some support of AVR in the ADA driver's library. Uh, more component, of course, there's never, never enough. There are so many uh, uh, components in the market. Um, USB stack, so I mentioned that we support, uh, we have a lot of support for the STM32. Uh, the main block that we are missing right now is support for the USB. Uh, so that's something I, I, I really would like to, to work on and to support in, uh, in Adad Hours Library. And there's on the BBC Microbit, there's a Bluetooth Low Energy uh, microcontroller, so it would, it would be also nice to have some kind of, of uh, uh, Bluetooth stack on, on, on this platform as well. <coughs> so now it's time for the demo. Um, so I will, I, I already prepared a few things, so if you want to start uh, programming, uh, embedded programming in ADA, you, you can get one of the boards that was listed before. Uh, so for this demo I use the um, STM32F469, just right here. <coughs> so beforehand I downloaded the toolchain. So you can go to uh, adacore.com slash community. You will see the, the community release of our toolchain. So we want the ARM ELF uh, version of the toolchain that you can download here. Download it, install the tools. Then you can download the, the ADA drivers library uh, code. So either you clone the project or you download the zip. And uh, there, there we go for the demonstration. It is working, okay. So this is uh, GNAT Programming Studio. I will start it here. It's our IDE. Uh, it's uh, supporting ADA, C, C++, and Python, I think. Um, so when you start GPS, you can open a project, project file. So let's say this is the ADA driver's library sources. You go to the example um, directory, and then you will have uh, one subdirectory for each of the boards that we support. So for me, it's the 469, so I go into this subdirectory, and here we have the different examples that are uh, supported on this board. So I will take the draw example. <coughs> okay, so this is, uh, as I said, GPS, our IDE. So as you can see over there, you have your sources. This is what it looks like. Uh, you have support for code navigation, so for instance, if I want to um, if I want to see the definition of this color over here, you can jump uh, in in the code. you have code completion, so if you want to change something to green, things like that so like uh, really a modern ID features uh, you can then compile your uh, embedded projects. So this is compiling all the, um, the ADA drivers library, so you can see the components. Uh, this is the CPU support, hardware abstraction layer, the uh, STM32 drivers. Uh, I don't think I've enabled the parallel compilation here. Okay. There we go. Um, one really nice feature of, uh, of GPS as well is um, this view over here, which gives you uh, how much memory you are using uh, in your application. So we can see, the, we can see the, the, the RAM, for instance, and you can have some details and see where, uh, what part of the, of, the, of the program uses most uh, memory. 
Um, so <coughs> you might think it's it's uh, it's a lot of memory that we use over here, but please keep in mind that we have the tasking uh, environment embedded. So we have the the, the stacks, uh, we have the kernel. Everything is, is embedded here. Um, so now that we have our uh, program compiled, I will just plug the USB ports of this board. Let's go. Tech. Uh, I don't need this. And I will have uh, over there, you can see them, we have different um, um, uh, shortcuts. Uh, and this one is flash to board, so this will uh, make sure the, the, the program is at the latest version, so it recompile it and then send the application to the to the board. So that's why uh, developing on embedded is slow. Um, and I have to reset it and this uh, should work. So it's drawing the, it's just a simple drawing uh, example. Now if I want to debug my application, I can use this button over here, debug on board, and this will um, open a debugging session. Yes. This will open a debugging session, flash the, the application, start GDB, etc., etc. So I don't know if I mentioned it, but the, the GNAT compiler, uh, the GNAT toolchain is based on GCC, and our debugger is uh, uh, based on GDB. Um, we contribute the IDA support uh, to GDB. And then, well, it's again very common uh, debugging session. Let me put, uh, uh, where is it? I can put a breakpoint over here, for instance. Uh, continue. Hey, hey. Ah, looks like you didn't pray enough. <laughs> I don't really care. I don't know. Maybe I'm not reaching this code. Uh, current mode drawing. Uh, let's restart. Well, okay. So demo effect. This should work. It doesn't. Um, and then from 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 this interface, you have all the um, usual. Um, uh, GDB feature, so you have the, the call stack up over here. So we can see that it's waiting for some I squared C communication. So maybe there's uh, something wrong here. Uh, we have the memory view. You can watch uh, watch uh, variables and, and, and all the, all the really neat and usual um, debugging features. So that's it for the demo. Was more or less okay, right? <laughs> um, next part, I want to uh, talk about some of the projects that uh, were developed, so either by uh, uh, me or my colleagues at Ada Core, and also some people from the community. Um, so the first one, I already uh, kind of talked about it. Um, this was done by Anthony. Uh, he was uh, intern at Adacor at the time, and he wrote, he rewrote the full uh, <coughs> flight controller for this uh, drone using Ada and Spark, uh, proving uh, some properties uh, using using a Spark and formal proof. <coughs> this is a project that I made. It's uh, so CNC controller, a computer controlled machine, made with uh, all the um, DVD players and uh, floppy disk and this kind of stuff. Uh, for all the projects, I, I give you a link if you want to uh, have a look and have more information. Um, this was made by a uh, university in Spain, I think. Uh, so this is a LED pendulum, so using the uh, persistence, uh, retina persistence effect to uh, draw uh, text on, uh, on, the, on the air. So as you can see, this is the, the small uh, uh, cortex M board that I talked about earlier. Uh, this is another project by me. So I used the uh, OpenMV camera uh, and I plugged it to a uh, thermal printer. 
So thermal printer is uh, things that you will see uh, in uh, supermarket or restaurants to print uh, tickets, or credit card tickets, or stuff like that. And I use this to uh, make an instant camera. So you take a picture and it will print uh, grayscale, not very, not very beautiful, but uh, well, it's fun, at least. Um, Next one is from my colleague uh, Jerome. Uh, he, he implemented the uh, <coughs> version of the Wolfenstein uh, 3D engine uh, in ADAR. So it's running on, this one is the Cortex M7, but it's also running on uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, bare metal. It's running on different versions of the board. Um, so here, uh, yes, it's the Cortex M7. As you can see, it's customized, really, really nice ADA advocacy over there. Um, this one, uh, again, project by myself. Uh, this one is a custom hardware, actually. I developed the, the board as well. Uh, and um, this is a, um, a sampler and sequencer, so you can actually play. There's an SD card on the back side. You can play uh, samples of music um, uh, according to a pattern that you enter. Again, if you follow the link, you will probably find videos about this. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is the uh, Make With Data competition. So for the last two years, we organized a programming competition. So AdaCore organized this competition. Um, uh, so far, it was focused on embedded software projects. Uh, for the next edition, we will maybe open it a little bit, but uh, it's not sure right now. It's otherwise open to everyone. There's about uh, 8,000 uh, euros in prize. And so, as I said, we did not announce the, the next competition yet, but if you, follow, uh, if you follow us on Twitter, we will uh, make the announcement over there. And so my last uh, slides are two examples of projects. So the winner from 2016 is uh, Stefan Carrez, who is over here. Yeah, we can, we can hold it. Hold it. Um, he made, so this is again the same board as uh, Jerome used for the Wolfenstein. It's an uh, STM32 uh, F7, and there's an Ethernet port on it, so he uh, managed to program a, a network analyzer with this. Uh, so you used uh, the ADA drivers library in part, yes. and then you made your own uh, Ethernet driver yes. and uh, uh, IP stack and this kind of yes. thing. Yes. Okay. The, the, the goal of the project was to uh, analyze the traffic, analyze the packet, and provide some visual um, feedback about what is what we have on the network. <coughs> so here you see some um, IPTV which is running, um, and you have some uh, AGMP uh, multicast packet. So this is why you, you have some flat um, some flat uh, packet because you have. Uh, around 1,000 of packets every second, which are received for um, uh, TV, uh, IP TV. Okay, and so you display the, the graphic and all the, all the statistics uh, of, the, of the network. And for 2017, the winner, I don't think, is over here. Uh, it was Jonas. Um, and he made a uh, brushless um, motor controller. So the brushless motors are the ones used in, uh, in drones. Uh, typically, and uh, so this is also a custom uh, hardware. So Jonas designed this board, and he wrote the driver for it uh, using Ada and uh, Ada drivers library. Um, so that's it for my presentation. Uh, I will take any question if you if you have one. But uh, what I would like really to know is what are you going to make with Ada? Questions, maybe? Yes? So, uh, I have a bit from the driver's library, but I um, want to ask if the, can the building change so that we can uh, separate the board definitions from the um, driver's library itself. Because I, I designed my own board and basically I had to drop the driver's library to integrate the, the board definition uh, inside it. Okay. So the question, yeah, I will try to repeat the question. The question is about um, the new uh, change that we will do in the build system and uh, about uh, configuration of the library for your custom hardware, right? So um, 
So there's actually two parts. That's something that we mentioned in the documentation, and uh, I, I really just went really quickly over this. In ADA, you have the, so there's the ADA drivers library, and there's the runtime, which is the, the, the library that uh, supports the tasking and, and these kind of things. And usually, that's where you will have most of the uh, uh, hardware-dependent code. So I don't know if it's the case for you. Uh, um, what we will do with the next build system is we will try to, as I said, support all the, uh, uh, the, all the Cortex-M uh, peripherals, uh, sorry, microcontrollers, and we will also have some ways of configuring uh, a few points in the, in, the, um, in, the, in the driver's library. So, for instance, what you will do is you say, I want to start a new uh, ADA driver's library project, and you will specify which microcontroller you use, and so you will have the linker script for this uh, microcontroller. You will have um, the vector files and, and stuff like that. And you will also be able to configure, for instance, what is the uh, external clock, uh, external oscillators, and this kind of stuff uh, inside the, the, the wizard for the configuration. That's what we have uh, planned. I don't know if that's what you were thinking about. or OK, good. The external clock. Um, I didn't see. Um, before I haven't looked at it in the past month. Um, how to change the clock to um, suspend the microcontroller and uh, something like this? It, it seems it's uh, all just uh, clock setup from initialization. Okay. And, uh, so. The, the question is about uh, configuration of the system clock, and if you can turn it turn it off or change the frequency, right? Um, so. Uh, given the actual uh, implementation of the Ravenska runtime, the runtime I was mentioning, uh, we do not support, um, this is somewhat called uh, CPU throttling, so you can change the frequency of your CPU. Uh, we do not support this right now, um, mostly because your, um, your time variables or your, your clock variables will, be, will have no sense if you change the, the frequency, the speed of the clock. So that's not something we support. Uh, what you can do if you want to save uh, energy is, uh, well, first, in, in, the, in the, the kernel so th that implements the task uh, inside the runtime, when there's no task to run, we put the CPU in wait mode, so wait for interrupts, that's, so it's somewhat lower power mode. And the next solution is to really uh, shut down, so if you have a STM32F4, you will have to shut down um, the, the CPU. Uh, to save energy. That's that's all we have uh, so far. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, the bone group, you know that uh, a little um, bit. So it's it's. You uh, have motor controllers and, and ARM A series and ARM M series. Okay. All in the same board. Mm -hmm. So. Do you support? So the question is about. M series part of it with uh -huh. The question is about the support of the uh, Beagle, BeagleBone Blue, right? Uh, which, uh, which CPU is running on this? I, I guess it's made for Linux or...? Uh it's it's uh, for Linux, at least. We're okay. Linux on the A series. There are two cores in it. There's an M series core okay. and then an A series ARM core okay. at the same time. Okay, I didn't. Okay, I didn't know this one. So you looks like there's an, an Cortex A core and a Cortex M. So for the Cortex A, I would say you it's really meant to run Linux. So you should run Linux, and uh, that's what I was mentioning in the improvements that we want to do to support some of the uh, Linux uh, driver for I squared C and SPI, etc. For the Cortex M part, I don't know. I don't know this device in particular, but you should be able to. Uh, to support it with uh, with uh, with the Ada Drivers library, there will probably be um, some adaptations to be uh, to to this specific hardware. But uh, yeah, that should be doable. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you all.